Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I'm going to test out two more airplanes for my eventual plane mod pack. After this I have to do the F-16, 747 and the XB-70 Valkyrie. Uh, those I had already modeled but I have to fix up and I want to add better textures for them. So that's what's happening and then I'll release the mod pack and then I'll make more planes for it. But uh, that is the plan. So. Yeah, but first we have to test out the Super Guppy and the F-104. I've made sure that they can take off, but I have not landed them. So that's the situation. Uh, so we're not completely untested here, but this one in particular caused a lot of problems. And as a result, I wasn't able to put FAR on any of its surfaces because what happened when I put FAR on anything, uh, it was that the center of lift went all the way back here and therefore it was nose heavy and couldn't get off the ground. The big problem here is that FAR doesn't understand the shape of this body very well, or at all, and therefore doesn't realize that the center of pressure is being moved by the enormous body, and therefore pulling the center of lift forward. So I had to basically do some uh, shenanigans with the module lifting surface, making the wing more lifty, uh, in relation to the horizontal stabilizer in order to bring the center of lift further forward. So that's basically the idea and we will see how well that works out. We are currently half fueled, not fully fueled with av gas. The parts that I made are of course the body, the wings. Uh, I made makeshift made makeshift uh, Super Guppy engine pods. They're all the same. They don't look exactly like the Super Guppy's engine pods but I expect to be able to touch them up and then also use them for other things. These are just uh, engines that come with advanced jet engines, the right cyclone. So hopefully you have those so that you can put them on. Any right cyclone, uh, technically the Super Guppy used better engines than the right cyclone, but they'll do for us for now. Uh, if we had the better engines, that would be great, but I did not find them. So we would have to create them. So yeah. Uh, change name tag, uh, advanced jet engines extended, I just wanted to check that. So advanced jet engines extended has those. And then of course the control surfaces and landing gear I also left out. So otherwise it's just the body, vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, and wings. So let's take it outside and see how it goes. I had made the Super Govy previously, but I had the same problem with the lifting surfaces, so I had not put in the lifting surfaces before. I just used procedural wings for those, and somehow it managed to work out like that. I don't know how, but yeah, apparently not this time. Well, throttle up. Now, there are weird things with these engines. For instance, note that the max thrust is 5.492 giganewtons. I don't understand that one. And, uh, sorry, uh, Delta V, you can see that we have a thrust weight ratio of 11,000, clearly not, and a burn time of 0.1 seconds. So, yeah, these engines obviously do not read properly in mech gym. <laughs> not, not even a little bit. Just, there's still a lot of problems with trying to make aircraft in Kerbal Space Program, let's face it. And this is a tough aircraft to make even at the best of times. So we're going to try and rotate here. Yeah, it's a little bit squirrely. Oh, and it's tilting to one side. And okay, I think we're going up. We are going up. So about 150 miles an hour is what that translates to. Which is not bad. It's always got to be higher with uh, with Kerbal Space Program and FAR involved because again the cross-section of the wing isn't being taken into consideration very well. We don't even have any cargo but then again it doesn't carry very heavy cargo. It just carries bulky cargo like empty tanks. So cockpit I need to do something with because right now if we take a look inside here I put the mark one dash uh, no, no the mark 3 cockpit the mark 3 cockpit and we've got some raster prop monitor stuff but so the shuttle cockpit but the problem is I have an interior for the 
Super Guppy uh, for its cargo hold. And so basically I just need to move the wall of that interior a little bit so that the wall of the interior is behind the cockpit area instead of in front of it. Right now we're seeing the wall still. So that's the problem there. The cargo bay can open and close. Uh, I've got some morbid curiosity. I wonder what happens if we do it now. It, th this thing does have colliders. Um, nope, it, it doesn't look like um, it, it affects the controllability of this at all. So apparently, the, even though this definitely has colliders on it, the airflow isn't really hitting these in any meaningful way. Alas, it is not that realistic. Because the forward section is animated, I can't put the landing gear on it as it ought to be. The, landing, the forward landing gear is on the forward section, but if I try to put it on there, it won't follow the animation. So it would just sort of float in front there and get in the way of the ramp. Well, we're, we're doing pretty good on speed, I think. Um, Wikipedia says that the maximum speed was 250 knots, so we're right about there already. We're even past that. But the max speed was probably not an engine limitation. It was, uh, we've got a really big forehead situation. <laughs> Uh, the pressure and we clearly saw when I opened the bay that that's not really operating right right now and see that's our big problem that's why I had some issues configuring the wing and all because it's just clearly not understanding that and it's possible that this kind of animation it wouldn't really track but the colliders should follow the animation incidentally they do otherwise we wouldn't be able to get into the bay and I have loaded stuff into the bay before it's not easy, but it is doable. Well, I better idle this now. We probably need to slow down quite a lot. Okay, heading for the runway now. And I probably should throw a lot, but it'll be best if we stay above 100 meters per second, probably. Okay, gear down. I am not trying to use any flaps here. Flaps can be configured, but I'm not using them. It's a shame the engine sound is so low. Well, we can probably land at a lower speed than this. I'll try and hover above the runway for a bit. Okay, probably good to go now. And... Touchdown. Decent speed, not a big problem. Okay, so that's a super guppy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Decided to go on its tail a little bit there. Oh, the suspension. Well, let's face it, it's a crazy thing. Anyway, on to the F-104. Okay, so here's the F-104. We have some insignia, though I accidentally have sort of a weaviness in the U.S. Air Force here. It's not on the opposite side, interestingly enough. See, this side... Oh, there is a little bit of waviness here. I don't know what happened there. We've got some streakiness. It just went too fast. I don't know. I don't know how that happened at all. So, I'll have to take a look at that. How that happened to the texture. But, yeah, there's been some distortion somehow. But, in any case, we have a nice model. Otherwise, uh, we have an all-moving horizontal stabilizer. Uh, but to avoid it clipping into things, you'll probably have to limit that to 15 degrees either way. And otherwise, the procedural control surfaces are used for the rudder. Flaps, and God knows if they're e uh, effective or not, and the uh, ailerons. 
and we have the landing gear configured like that the center of mass and center lift are like that actually and the engine that we need is the J79 turbojet and so with one of those we are going to head out and see how it goes unlike some of the other planes most of the fuel is actually in the body not in the wings so most of our kerosene is there I did put some kerosene in the wings but it's not much I forget the I should check in in flight sim with the F-104 I have there exactly what the spread of the fuel is but anyway the this runway incidentally the reason why they always slide back is because it's actually tilted up the entire runway okay oh. well up up come on Okay, about 120 meters per second there. Oh, oh no, it's going off kilter. Uh, I shouldn't have forced it up like that. Maybe a little bit more than 120 meters per second. Still, that's really high, but, you know, as I've explained. But then again, the F-104 really had those really thin airfoils. The problem is we don't have the engine bleed system that shoves air across the wings. That whole fancy business that allowed it to take off and land at lower speeds. Of course, we could try to configure flaps, but that's, as I've also explained, not always the most effective thing in Kerbal Space Program. Because the flaps also induce drag. So, okay, we'll wait a little bit longer. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't go! Oh, short wheelbase. The narrow wheelbase, I mean. The wheels are really close together here. Again, I'm using atmospheric autopilot instead of SAS. Mm. No, no! Oh. Okay, maybe I'll pull up strenuously and then like level out quickly instead of trying to force it after that. Because pulling up early on seemed to help the first time. Uh, uh yeah. Okay, well, we're in a better situation now. Okay, Oop, nope, I want to keep that on. Okay. Gear up. So, yeah. Apparently getting it off of the nose gear is a good thing. Otherwise it accelerates like anything. Because we don't have much of a load right now, we don't have the external tanks, we don't have any weapons. Uh, I think it has a thrust weight ratio of 1, legitimately. Uh, or close, it's uh, 0.93. So more or less we could go like this and pull up. And... It can almost accelerate here like this. If we poke down a little bit. Well, it is losing speed, but still doing pretty good. Seems like an F-104 to me. Okay, let's level out here and try to break the sound barrier and everything. Again, should not be difficult with this. And we are past the sound barrier. Let's sort of turn parallel to the runways so that we can get back easier. Don't want a long trip out of this. The stage time down there is once again incorrect. We have much less time than that with the afterburner on, as one would expect. So that's not incorrect. Okay, we are parallel to the runway, and we'll see if this can accelerate to Mach 2-ish. Okay, we are at Mach 1.8 now, nearly 15,000 meters in altitude, and it's looking good. Still accelerating. 
Well, it's sort of creeping up on Mach 2, which suggests that this is a good limit for it. It's sort of acting the way you would expect it to act. Uh, lo mostly leveling out here. And we can get beyond Mach 2 pretty well. It can probably go faster than this, but I'm satisfied that it's not... It would probably give overspeed warnings and stuff like that. The limits are partly structural after all. So as long as we can get to Mach 2, that is satisfactory. This does have far on the wings, but not on the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. And the reason it's not on the horizontal stabilizer is because that is not cut in two. There's no symmetry for it. So as far as far is concerned, it would only read the left-hand portion of it, and it wouldn't read the right-hand portion of it. And as a result, uh, the thing would be imbalanced. Okay, we don't want to have too much stress on the airframe. Far can still rip this to pieces if it wants to. Uh, that's interesting. As I get close to it, it sort of like has uh, the clipping is sort of the camera cl clipping is sort of in a different location that I'm used to. Normally, it didn't doesn't clip that far away. That's a bit weird. Anyway, if it flies the way it's supposed to, I'm okay. I was just trying to look at the decals. They aren't really uh, decal decals. They're decals in Substance Painter. And I was wondering why... Maybe I had the wrong camera view, or I don't know why they were applied wrong. It's a weird thing. Maybe I, I adjusted the model after applying the texture? I don't remember doing that. But that would distort it. Well, now landing. We know this is going to be tricky. Okay, here we go. Seems to be slowing down all right. But will I end up pining for air brakes? They would be back here one on either side. Maybe I can tell Kerbal that the nose, the swinging nose of the of the Super Guppy is a giant air brake. That might get its attention. <laughs> I don't know if that will work right or not. Okay, locked view again. And there's no telling what the safe speed is with this yet. Okay, here we go. Uh, ah, 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 oh, yeah. But, I mean, we took off at like 120 meters per second, so I didn't think that we could land that much less than that. So, landing is going to take some practice with that in particular, especially with the narrow wheels. So, yeah, what can I say? So, all right, there are some things I need to touch up about both of them, like the textures on this one and the cockpit location in the Super Guppy. But, overall, I think this is okay. It's certainly in a better situation than the F-102, which I couldn't get off the runway, and I'll still have to work on that. So, otherwise, the three other planes that I had modeled before that I need to fix up and get ready for the mod pack, and then I'll release it. Some uh, There might be still some problems with them, but I'll let you play around with them and hope for the best. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is all for realism overhaul, though. I haven't tested any of these in stock. That's all other business. In theory, if you delete the RO configurations for all of them, they could work. They'll be smaller, physically smaller, actually, all by the same scale. Uh, but, yeah, Kerbal sized. But, yeah, so anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.